<laughs> so we do see Fnatic flicking over. They have not locked in either Gangplank or Yorick, toying between the different picks. Now, if this Ash is locked in, which it is, it was banned against Fnatic by Vulcan the first time these two teams played. They actually did not have Ash banned against them in the other games here, though, and they did not pick up that Ash. They went something like Varus multiple times. So it's interesting that going up against Vulcan this time, they do go back to this ash Zyra combo, which was so good for them at Gamescom. That was really the crux of their strategy during Gamescom, is this ash Zyra plus Ari. They can have Ari split pushing as long as Peke gets off to a good start. He's an amazing split pusher on Ari. Great duelist, uh, has that teleport. And then Ash and Zyra are wonderful at defending turrets four versus five because they have so much counter engage, and they're also good at turning the head. As soon as the teleport comes in with that Ari, joining the battle, they can engage with Crystal Arrow. Well, we'll see how this works out for them. I was going to highlight that with that Zyra takeaway from Vulcan, that's Bloodwater's three or four games being played on Zyra. So not only is it that immense control, you're denying it from Bloodwater, he is going to fall back onto Sona. This will be the second time he's playing yeah, here on Worlds. He's those are his two chances. <laughs> you know what big, I mean? It's not like... He's a big fan of Sona. Exactly. I don't think that's going to hurt him too hard. But with the Lissandra lock-in after Ari's been taken here, I'm pretty sure Vulcan are going to look to pick off uh, Peke because Lissandra is actually very good at if there's any laps in vision, her plus Smithy, it's going to be a Mancler plus Smithy combo here um, to prey on Peke and catch him out if he does go split pushing. There's no teleports right now on Fnatic, which is very uncharacteristic of Fnatic. They usually have Soaz or Peke running a teleport, so maybe so my previous point is invalid. Soaz was sitting on teleport for a very long time and has only just recently switched that over to Ignite. To round out the Fnatic composition, it is going to be that Lee Sin and the Zac. So they have got immense initiation. They've got immense utility. They've got an assassin in the form of Ari. I feel like Fnatic have got a very well-rounded comp here. They, they can do many things well. They've got really good hard engage with that end game crystal arrow plus Zach elastic slingshots following that up. Very, very long range engage here from this Fnatic team. And, uh, you know, if they don't actually end up taking one of those teleports, then the split push will be a little bit harder to pull off. But having Ignite makes Ari a much better duelist. And if she can't outmatch one versus one up mid, um, then she'll actually have a much bigger upper hand in those fights rather than running that teleport and running the risk of going down to that man cloud smithy combo. Well, I very much like the lock-in of this Vladimir. Gonna allow him to, at the very least, dodge the arrow. And in late-game team fights, that could mean someone else is gonna eat an arrow to the face if he sanguin pulls underneath it. That's but this is something that we've seen a fair amount of. Vlad is a sort of fringe pick. We don't see it all too often, but he's there. Yeah, it's always funny to watch you dodge an arrow just to have it hit your AD carry right behind you, which is yep. even worse. The thing, though, with the last pick, Black, I love this pick against Zack. Zack does not have early spike damage. He has no pressure on a Vladimir where Vladimir is weakest. So Vulcan are definitely going to want to get that matchup of Zack versus Vlad. Expect to see some deep wards, probably one of those Ozone uh, lane wards, so that Vulcan can get the matchup that they want here. Uh, because Vlad scales up very well against Zack, and he becomes a split pushing monster, especially running Flash Ghost. All right, we'll see how it works out for them. You guys have been voting on this match at home, so let's see who you guys think is actually going to win this one. According to lolesports.com, 75% of the fans are sitting with Fnatic right now. Double of Pick Vulcan and the rest of the casters as well as Monty and Crepo, That's, they've sided with Fnatic That as well. is pretty overwhelming right there. Uh, you just have to remember, they're probably going off that last game, which was... Uh, the opposite team won. So Vulcan won the first round here versus Fnatic. They're thinking the same thing will happen uh, today. Well, we'll have to see if the uh, rematches will work to secure the team that lost revenge in today's games because we are going to be seeing a number of them. We're busy loading up into this matchup, and I imagine that the early couple of minutes is going to be so crucially important. Fnatic gave away those kills against Vulcan last time. You can see that we are jumping into the game in just a moment. Time. This is going to be Fnatic versus Vulcan game two here of day four. We do, again, have a Caitlyn plus Sona lane, though. So you, you have to watch out for the early turret pressure from Vulcan from that bottom, that bottom duo lane or, you know, whichever lane they end up going in. Well, we'll see if Vulcan can make it work for them. All right. Peke did go with the teleport. He almost tricked us. No, he almost tricked you. You okay. were doubting yourself. <laughs> you were doubting yourself. 
And at the last moment, Peke did lock in that teleport. So is this uh, time around with Flash and Ignite on that, Zach. So he's going to be looking to secure some kills in this early to mid game. So the thing here is, this is Fnatic's very clear playstyle that everyone always talks about. Oh, it's so weird to play against. Uh, Krepo and Monte Cristo were saying this style is so strong that without actually playing against it, they didn't think Vulcan would come up with a counter. But Vulcan are very much aware of this signature Fnatic style, and Bloodwater does a lot of work beforehand to come up uh, with counter counter plans here for Vulcan. So we'll have to see if they've actually if this one's actually going to pay off. This will be very interesting because you know all the research has definitely been done for Vulcan. Just can they execute? Well, this is going to be the first time that we're seeing Psycho Sid or Mancloud on Vladimir and Alessandro respectively here at Worlds. We'll see how well that double AP composition stacks up. As it stands, very defensive starts from both of these teams. Neither team has been able to get that very deep lane vision ward that mm, we've talked about, yeah. but it does look like they're matching up in their respective 2v2s and 1v1 lanes. I think this is pretty good for Vulcan here. Um, they're going to have that Vlad versus Zac, which they want. And then Bloodwater actually might get chunked out early. This, this could change the bottom lanes. We've seen a couple face checks already from bottom lanes, and that can definitely swing the tide of that matchup, especially going up against an Ash who's got a first hit crit. Oh, and then luckily for Bloodwater and Zuna, they've been able to avoid it right now. We see Cyanide is actually soloing that blue buff. Hasn't had much assistance there from Soaz, whereas Psycho Sid was able to put a fair amount of damage on x Smithies and Lizard, that red buff. So, going to have a little bit more HP to work with. We do see in this bottom lane they have set up and some early poke going down from Pushroom Yellowstar gives them an HP advantage for the time being. Yep, they would got the, the early win on the trade there. You have to note that while Caitlyn's got the highest range, uh, Ash and Zyra are not far behind. This, this lane is very, very close in range to a Caitlyn here. And Pushu made good use of the first crit, whereas Bloodwater on his Sona, trying to get off that power cord, he charged the power cord up in the fountain and then tried to come to lane to use it for an early advantage. But he took two hits in exchange for it, and they actually came out behind here. So very early lane domination here from Fnatic. That's definitely something that they wanted to establish early on. Oh, Zuna! So low, 200 HP, no flash or barrier burn though. And just Yellowstar playing the poke game incredibly well. Remember, Yellowstar used to be the AD carry for Fnatic, so he's going to be well aware of the timing and the positioning of Zuna going into land those last hits. And Yellowstar's playing it perfectly. He's taking a lot of poke damage in return from Bloodwater, though. Zuna's just going to hang as far back as possible and try to hold on with as much CS as possible. Meanwhile, Cyanide actually getting a little bit ahead of Smithy in gold because he cleared another camp whereas Smithy walked onto a ward. Peke just lands a nice little love tap there onto Smithy. Face planted that charm and the Orb of Deception. We do see Yellow Star. His cookie has been eaten right now, sitting with a potion and a ward left in his inventory. Still trying to play that poke game, but Zuna's done well. He's held back far enough and Bloodwater's spamming out those heals to keep him topped up. Yeah, they've got the sustain advantage here with the Caitlyn Sona. Double it was saying Sasane is crucial going up against the Caitlyn lane. But Ash and Zyra are making good use of their poke. Look at this rotation though from Soaz, all the way from top lane to pressure Mantory Cloud. Oh, we see Man Cloud is low on mana. He has decided to back away. Soaz is gonna try to return to lane without losing too many too much CS. And you know, with the impact that Man Cloud had in the previous game, he was playing Orianna, and I think he went something like 7-1, something other towards the end. They definitely don't want to allow him to get ahead with Lissandra, especially because both Peke and Soaz play the champion. They're going to be well aware of its capabilities. And she has amazing lockdown. She can keep you in place for a long time by herself, but she's going to need some other source of damage. Her soloing Ari is a little bit difficult because the, the extra damage was taken down on her a little bit to compensate for how much crowd control she does have. So we'll see as we are getting closer to level 6. Mancloud is very low on mana, but thanks to Lissandra's passive, going to be able to have some free spell costs every now and again. He's going to decide to back away now. 36 CS in his back pocket. We'll see what he decides to pick up. We see X Smithy has already secured himself a pink ward after going back. And going to try to get some vision control. A pink ward secured for Mancloud as well. So definitely placing some importance on this early game vision 
against Fnatic. They don't want to get caught up by those rotations and potential ganks that Soros and Sun have already been looking at, trying to see if they can taste victory. Yeah, it's very uneventful early game here. Some more good wards coming out and some heavy jungle farming from Cyanide here. He is slowly getting a little bit ahead of Smithy. Meanwhile, the mid lane definitely went Peke's favor as he was able to shove one minion wave up before Mantori Cloud arrived. But since Lissandra a little bit slower at pushing, he's going to arrive in time to grab these ones up. And we see a slightly different build here from Inkspec is uh, he's gone with that Chalice of Harmony. Mm. Early magic resistance against Elise, Vlad, and Lissandra. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Double AP. It's actually a triple AP because their jungler is AP as well. And he's only really uh, worried in the early game about that combo of the Lissandra plus the Elise bursting him down. So I really like going this Chalice instead of, you know, something that the Chinese teams were opting for. Um, with rushing the Abyssal Scepter. Right, Charm's going out. That's the first one we've seen Peke miss. He got some decent damage on Man Cloud. He was hanging out in the river. Right now, Pusher and Yellowstar are oh, extended. That's they got ex the exhaust. Lost down. We see X Smithy has been rooted in place. Yellowstar's been able to save Pusher for a while. He does flash. Gets away from the cocoon. Tower oh. damage is there. The barrier bait is up. Now the tower turns onto Bloodwater. First blood is secured. But look in the background. Pick has used the teleport. He's been able to pick up one. Now barrier is down. Pick is low on mana. Zuna dropped to 150 HP. Final rush oh. is for rush. It's going to be enough. Pick with the Double kill, three for one to Fnatic. That teleport definitely paying off right now. He's able to turn that completely around, even though First Blood going to Vulcan. Three kills for Fnatic, all assisted. And the first blood was secured with Blood Water, the support. That's not ideal when it's your carries you want to give the goal to. Yellow Storm Peke trading as much damage on this tower as they can before the minion wave is taken out. And Peke hasn't even lost in form up in the top lane. Ignite is burning on Psycho City. So as is going to have his cell division. Not even going to get popped just yet. But let's bounce. Hemo play, Ghost Flash, everything blown in that top lane. So many summoners are down for Vulcan now. Their bottom lane is. No summoners as well. They do have a pink ward for this dragon, though. And because Pekka just recalled, it is going to be Vulcan actually answering with an objective. Very smart move right here. Even though they lost out on the kills, they took advantage of the low health of that mid laner to grab something back. That keeps the gold basically even right now. 200 gold separates these two teams, and that's a good start. Sinai trying to extend that a little bit further. Realizing the dragon was going on, he's going to steal away this red buff from under Vulcan's nose. Very good counter here from Cyanide. Whenever you do have that vision of the opponent jungle, you need to take advantage of it. And all said, I think Fnatic still uh, came out definitely ahead in that last foray down bottom. Even though Mantoy Cloud was able to shove mid, he's still behind in minions because Pekka took a lot from the bottom lane. As it stands right now, Pushu's return to lane of those two assists with a BF sword. So that's going to be a lot of damage being traded if he can land. Vladimir's trying to place his ward right now into Cyanide with Red Buff. So Cyanide's putting some very good damage down. Realizes Hemo Plague's not up. No Nor summoner. Is that. Take a look at that. The slingshot comes in. There's no bounce either. But the sli stretching slingshot does catch. Sid is slowed down. Red Buff is up. It's going to be ticking. It's Cyanide secures it. In the bottom lane, Pushu with the BF sword is going to secure a kill into Zuna. And Fnatic with a 5-1 kill lead are in great position right now. Bloodwater not level six, no crescendo for him. That means Zuna's gonna go down. Good job again, Fnatic taking advantage. No summoners there for Vulcan, top or bottom. So they get repeat kills. As it stands right now, Smithy's trying to set something up in the mid lane. Spirit Rush is available. Oh. Peke dashes to the right, has two more procs available, and he's gonna be able to stay out of range of that cocoon and does actually get out cleanly. Now Yellow Star and Pushu are applying f uh, damage to this tower, and it's a couple auto attacks away. This is gonna be first tower of the game, falling to these minions most likely. The Fnatic are gonna try to even up this global objective score. Okay, so minions do get that early turret. But the dragon was already taken by Vulcan, so they won't. That extra control for the bottom lane won't do a lot for them in the near future. And we'll have to see at this point will Zuna go the route of Genja and freeze that bottom lane? Or will he try and shove it back and get his team some more pressure on their map elsewhere? Well, talking about decision making of players, Mancloud's going the way of Expeke from game one with his Lissandra. His first big item is a Negatron Cloak. That didn't work out for Peke when they played Vulcan. He didn't have the damage necessary, and we see 
he has to deal with Peke's early Fiendish Codex and, and presence, and Mancloud's got the defensive defensive start. Yeah, well, he yeah, he's definitely thinking there's two solo lane APs up there, and then he his team has the Elise and the Vladimir as well, so someone over there with an Abyssal Scepter will be nice in the late game. Pulling down the Magic Resist of Fnatic. It means that his lane right now in the middle is going to be safer, yet the kill potential is not very high at all. And Cloud now, now falling further and further behind. Over 20 CS behind Peke right now. Teleport will be up in the not too distant futures. Around about 20, 25 seconds on that cooldown. And we'll have to see whether or not Fnatic want to make another play. There's no tower on that bottom lane. So if Zuna and Bloodwater stay extended trying to farm, they're at risk of being jumped on by Peke's Ari. Yeah, it look, so far it looks like, even though Vulcan have had so much footage of this Fnatic, this pretty much this exact Fnatic style, not doing a great job of adapting. The early teleport really turned this in Fnatic's favor. Once again, giving away that Ari. It's something that Vulcan did during picks and bans. Their final ban was Oriana and not Ari. Right now, Fnatic grouping up in this mid lane. There's four of them here available trying to Try and shove down this lane. You can see Zuna not freezing lane in his tower, instead pushing it down towards Fnatic. And Fnatic gonna get a four versus three potential. Remember, Enchanted Crystal Arrow is up if anyone steps out of line. Mancloud does have his ultimate ready, but he's stunned right now. Does that's get rooted down. Stranglethorns throws Ooh. them up, and that's a pretty awkward engage from Fnatic. They didn't seem to commit to it. Look, they chunked out half of Mantor Cloud's life, though. That is one of the weaknesses of Lissandra, yes, she does have an immunity that she can cast. However, she can't do anything if she gets CC'd from 100% to zero. They didn't dive in on that one because they couldn't chain them. But still, chucking him out to 50% means there's not a lot of aggression they can return. A lot of damage going onto that tower as well, dropping into a couple hundred hit points. We see that push you. He's returned to the bottom lane to stay even on CS with Zuna. However, he's sitting on that pickaxe and BF sword, so significantly higher attack damage to the Vamp Scepter Berserker's Greaves that Zuna has to deal with. Now we see Sid and Soas. They continue their, their island battle, as it were. Both of these top laners, for both of these teams, in fact, play that stick alone in the top lane. That's a crescendo into a Glacial Tomb. Peke is going to spur rush away. Oh, he's still cyanide. alive. He survives. The Cyanide takes the ace in the hole. The Grasping Roots in the background locks up Vulcan. And in actual fact, it's Fnatic that pick up a kill. Here comes Soaz. Slingshots in. He interrupts Mancloud. Mancloud cannot get away with the Claw of Doom. It signals his doom. Zuna oh. rushes forward. Cyanide gets away with about 10 HP. Now they turn the attention onto Zuna. Ignite's ticking. It's not going to be enough to pick up the kill. But Fnatic grab too, and all of a sudden, Peke wants to play with Psycho Sid. No spurt rush, Sid's gonna get away. Sid will be easily be able to ghost out of that, but the dive right there, where they tried to hold down Ari, was the plan with Osanjo. They even used Crescendo for that as well. But a beautiful body block from Cyanide, saving Peke's life. And then there was just not enough damage with that Lissandra going Negatron Cloak early. Also, Cyanide was able to get out of that alive. Again, Lissandra, huge weakness with being interrupted by crowd controls. Amazingly played there by Fnatic. Fnatic are now 4,000 gold in the lead. They're going to secure their fourth tower of the game. They have the bottom inner turret. They have all outer turrets. And Peke, even though he doesn't have teleport, he's going to be playing the split push role. Kobe, it's, it's almost like you know how Fnatic well, plays. Yeah. <laughs> we, we talked about it before. Teams are very aware of this. It looks like Vulcan are trying to answer that split push with this dragon. Oh, the Ash Arrow goes in. It's not going to be oh. enough. Smithy's going to be able to smite that one. Cyanide, actually one of the best smite stealers yeah. in the business. Not this time, It's though. worth noting that was extremely impressive uh, there by Smithy. He was able to get it away. Cyanide, known for stealing dragons. Peke just got his Spurt Rush available. So if Sid gets caught by another charm like that, Peke may have enough damage to kill him. He's got the Needlessly Large Rod, plus that Athena's and Holy Grail already completed, and a very healthy CS lead over his opposite number. There's no MR for Sid to deal with it. He can sustain well, but he's not going to survive the burst super efficiently. And it's definitely up to him to deal with this Peke split push, too. So we'll have to see how that one turns out later and how the vision control of this Lizard side. Vulcan jungle does turn out. Because right now, Fnatic are taking advantage of this Caitlyn bottom. They pretty much have free reign over the red buff. 
This is the second red buff steal in a row for Fnatic. The last one went to Cyanide. Once again, Sid gets charmed up by Peke. A lot of damage goes down. Here comes Soez from the back line. They're just trying to focus down this turret. Peke eating a ton of turret hits. Zuna has recalled though, so Caitlyn will be joining the Vulcan team. If Fnatic try and stick around to finish off this turret, it would be very dangerous. Oh, Peke realizing he's dropped very low, has fallen backwards. That would have been tower number five for Fnatic if they'd stuck around, but they have not. And you have to imagine that once Peke rejoins that lane, it won't take him too long to be able to actually uh, finish off that last couple of minutes. Thing is, it's, it's so early that it's very hard at 16 minutes in here for Bloodwater to uh, get an Oracles and clear out this vision. It looks like he's going for it, though. He's bought an Oracles plus a vision ward here. He's going to do his best to clear out all of the wards that Fnatic just placed in their red side invade. The only thing is they've already stolen away the crucial thing in that jungle which is the red buff. Now they'll be looking for picks there. Well, push you once again returning to that bottom lane just as that very large wave of minions is about to crash into his tower. He has the red and had the blue buff available, so can allow him to just clear out that wave even quicker. In the mid, we see Soaz trying to set a fight up. In fact, does have that slingshot available if he wants to jump in instead. Just the presence of Soaz, Pekka, and Cyanide is enough to force Vulcan backwards. And they're not even able to contest in 3v5. They weren't fully aware of where They have to be was. very, very careful because of the Crystal Arrow. That's always got to be in the back of your mind whenever you're playing against an Ash team. They can initiate from so far away. Crystal Arrow into Elastic Slingshot. And we've already seen Bushu throwing out that arrow onto Man Cloud the last time the mid-tower was under pressure. Look at Yellow Star and Peke's positioning. With Flash and Spirit Rush available, Peke may actually just dive over a wall if anyone eats that giant Enchanted Crystal Arrow, a bunch of wards going down trying to get vision. You can see this is what Fnatic are currently dealing with. It's just a matter of seeing who steps out of line first. Peke also has his Deathfire Grass, so he's looking to 100% either Zuna or Bloodwater. He got the charm! Charm does land on Bloodwater, it's not going to be enough. First proc of Spur Rush, I think it was used there by Peke. We'll see if he decides to continue in. Yellow Stars hanging around on the backside. Spur Rush proc 2 is down, Glacial Doom comes out. Now the arrow does catch Sid, that is immense. There's been no Hemo Plague yet. They've traded mid laner for support in mid lane. Now Sid forced backwards, the Hemo Plague was out, only catching Bushu. That's not going to be enough to kill him. Psycho Sid's going to be the next victim as we do see the Cell Division coming up. Cyanide has got a double kill in the background. And Zuna, the only member of Vulcan to survive. Fnatic now turn their attention to this mid in a turret. Zuna's still alive, but he can't defend against four. Again, Vulcan used everything to burst down Pekka there. They get him, but now they're going to get Ace. Cyanide jumps in. He didn't even use his Dragon Rage. Zuna now on the <laughs> other side. Root comes out. Not going to be enough. Stretching strike from Soaz finishes it up. That's a delayed Ace from Fnatic and tower number five to stack it up. Cyanide trying to kick him back into the rest of his team. Okay, so they get Peke with the ult into the crescendo, into the Zyra knockup. Very good answer here from Yellowstar to counter all of the initiate that Vulcan put out. And that Zyra Stranglethorn just won them the engage. He knocked everybody up after burning crescendo as well as the ice tomb. There was no more left for Vulcan. Vulcan basically became a flying team in that engagement. So many knockups coming in from Zack, from Zyra. They couldn't do a thing. Now, Mancloud's trying to pick up his blue buff. We see Smithy. Oh, he Smithy. does get charmed. Here comes Pekka. DFG was used. Second proc of Spur Rush. The third one still going to be used to finish off the blue. And that's another kill going to Fnatic. This time, landing in Yellow Star's hands. 3-0-8. At this point, Peke also has all the things that he needs to be a solo split pusher. He's got his magic resist, he also has his death fire, which is the killing potential, but he's used everything in that last pick. Hemo Plague did go down, a good charm onto Mancloud. Now Glacial Prison is available, but you see Mancloud decides not to chase, decides to uh, fall backwards. Push who's in a lanthus, lost auto attack to secure tower number six and give Fnatic an even bigger gold lead that's around about 8,000 gold right now. <laughs> it's actually Bushy taking a turn on doing that split pushing. Fnatic <laughs> so far ahead, they can their AD carry. Well, yeah, it's uh, Peke down bottom pulling resources over to his side of the map. Very confident Ash play right there because of the hot shot. Even though they don't have wards in red side anymore. Able to get a, another turret for Fnatic. And they are looking like they're going to run away with this one. Kripo and uh, Monty may have been right there. Seeing the Fnatic play style is not the same as actually playing against it and practicing. 
have to question the Lissandra pick as well. It hasn't worked out for Man Cloud. So he's, he's such a strong player, and you, you feel that maybe on under champions could have done more. Now, Red Buff is going to be secured here for Vulcan. This is the first one in three that they've been able to get their hands on. You see Pusher and the rest of Fnatic, they are pushing up the mid lane. And Chance of Crystal Arrow is available. As you see Yellow Star, he's clearing out wards at Ooh. Baron, so keep that in mind. Now, Peke threw the charm out if Man Cloud had landed. And it would have caught, but not this time. Now they've carried the Ash Arrow down onto Smithy. He has no repel to fall backwards. Xpeke does get locked up by the tomb. Crescendo and catches Bushu. him and Bushu, which is immense. We do see that. A great survive there as the lock of the Island Solari keeps Peke alive. Now Pusher turns his focus onto Sid. That's four quick kills. Back to back to back, and that locket keeping Peke alive. That's the tower down. This is going to be the inhibitor as well, and Fnatic may continue to push. That was very beautiful play there by Pushu, picking up those last three kills, going under the turret. But again, the frozen tomb into crescendo onto Peke seems to be seems to be what Vulcan were having as the answer, and it did not work out. There's a surrender. Vulcan calling it quits at 20.